We're getting ready to start our next project here and what we have is a motor shaft out of a pedestal grinder and this was sent to us by Matthew Mock from Stillwater, Oklahoma. This is a restoration project that he has been uh, working on for some time and uh, he sent this to me a few months back and asked me if I would help him with this and I told him that I would and what we've what we've got is both of the bearing journals on this rotor shaft right here are worn down. This is one of the bearings. This is the proper bearing size here. And you see it goes on, wiggles around, and that's the case for both sides right there. So this is a, this is a common type of uh, repair that I've seen in, you know, in, my, in my career. I've done this many times. So uh, I've showed this before in some past videos, but what we're gonna be using is the metallizing process to repair this. So what we'll do is we'll set this up in the lathe We'll get both of these journals, we'll undercut them, and I'm going to use my uh, eutectic metallizing gun and actually spray weld both of these journals. It'll, it'll build them up with a, a powdered metal. It'll be sprayed on there to build those up, and then we'll machine them back to the proper spec for these bearings to be properly fitted on that journal. So that's what we're going to do. We'll help Matthew get this back in the proper uh, specs that they need so that he can get this pedestal grinder uh, finish the restoration on this thing. We'll go down to the Victor lathe and set it up there. I'm going to use a four jaw so that I can make sure this thing is indicated good. I don't want to get all of the uh, spray weld uh, overspray and dust on the, uh, the the nice pretty six jaw chuck. I'm going to use the four jaw for that. And uh, so there we go. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we set up in the lathe, I'll show you one of these journals right here. This is where the bearing is going to sit. And you see just how much wear is on that. So what we've got is a 6306 bearing and I'm using imperial measurements. I know this is, uh, I believe it's 30 millimeter. So I've got my bearing chart right here. This is for electric motor uh, shaft and housing fits. And if I come down here to my 6306, it gives me my shaft diameter maximum and minimum sizes. So we're at 1.181.5, 1.181.2. That's the, that's the tolerance that this should be measured in uh, whenever this bearing is fitted on this shaft. And we take a measurement here. I know it, it's worn, but this gives you an idea how far under it is. We're at uh, uh, 1.176 and a half. So we're, we're really, that's like five thousandths under what that should be. So five thousandths smaller, that's way under the tolerance of what that should be. The other side, we'll just slide it down, is very similar to that. You can see it right here. That's measuring 1.170. So you're about six and a half thousand smaller on that side right there. You can actually feel it with your finger, how it drops down right there. A lot of wear in this. See how loose that bearing is? All right, so now we'll go to the lathe to get it set up. Okay, we've got it set up in the four jaw chuck now. I haven't got it indicated yet. Just wanted to show you our, our setup. And we're gonna come over here and we're gonna put some soft jaw pads in here on the shaft and we'll get it indicated. All right, here's the pads that I'm gonna use between the jaws and the uh, shaft. And these, this is some brass and they were longer than this and what I did was I just cut them with the hacksaw so that they would fit in there. This is a one inch diameter shaft on the ends there. I just snugged it up enough to hold the shaft in place. And what I'll do is just take it and I'm sorry that my hand is blocking it. I'll try to get it out of the way so you can see it there. And just like so. And I usually just do the opposite side since I've already got those two jaws kind of loose. get those two snug and then we'll go to the opposite two and do the same thing. So what this is a what this is doing is keeping these these jaws these are these uh, these are the serrated jaws so they're really going to bite down into a workpiece the uh, material of the shaft here and leave marks and there's threads on the end there so I don't want to I don't want to leave those little marks in those threads. So there we go. Now we got all four of our pads there and we'll go ahead and we'll put our indicator here and we'll get it indicated. 
can see we've got some indicating to do and I'm I'm indicating the actual journal where the grinding wheel is going to be sitting so we're going to indicate in both sides and make sure that we have it running true and then fix both journals at the same time all right so we want to loosen our lows tighten our highs I'm going to start with the highs just to make sure that that we're uh, snugged up and not loose now we'll start loosening our lows just a little bit Yep, see I had one fall out right there. <laughs> Let me go find out. Alright, we got our pad that fell out. That's what happens sometimes when you're using these, these little soft jaw pads. If you loosen it up too much, they'll fall out. Let's just keep rolling with it. We'll snug up our highs a little more and get some bite in on that on that brass. a half a thou. Now it's just a matter of chasing that high spot. Wherever it's high, just tighten that jaw. Looking pretty good right there. What do you think? We'll let it rip. We'll go down to the other end and make sure that our center is running nice and true and our other journal is, is running true as well. Okay, see we're on the outer end here. We got our center in there and we have got, let me just go ahead and you can see we've got a little bit of run out there. So we've got about two, two thousandths run out and I would like to, uh, I would like to improve upon that. So what we are going to do I'm going to set up the steady rest on this journal right here, right in front of the bearing. We'll set the steady rest here, and I'm going to recut the center and try to get this center cut more true, try to improve that 2000s to get it running true with the shaft right here. The reason why you might ask if that center is uh, running out is that if you look at, the, uh, look at the end of this, the face, this thing has some dents on there. It's been hit with a hammer or something at, at some point. And uh, sometimes it's very common that shafts are bumped or hit throughout the years. Or in some cases of shafts, there's been pullers put on these centers right there that messes up this center, which is used for the machining of the shaft. So uh, if, if the face of it is dented in or the center's been messed up, it's not gonna run true when you put a live or a dead center in the end of it. So we just have to recut this so that it's running true with the OD of the shaft. I'm gonna use a little bit of whey oil right here. Just come up until it touches. All right, I'm gonna back off on the center there. So now we should have, we should have a good running shaft there, right there on that journal where that grinding wheel is gonna be. So we will uh, recut our center true with that there. And I'll double check uh, the journal on the other end where we indicated it and make sure that's still running true there also before we cut this. So here's a trick you can use to cut the center of a shaft without having to actually tool it with a compound. Cutting it with a compound is, is the true way to do it. But you can use a center and a drill chuck, but the problem with using the, uh, the chuck and the tailstock is that if your center is already running way out, especially if it's running way out, that, that drill is going to follow that center, so you're never really going to get a good true center. But if you're only running out a slight amount, what you can do is come up in there and cut it and then use your compound, a tool, and push lightly over against it to force it to one side and keep it from wiggling, and it will true it up. And I've used it many times. It's a nice little trick. 
So we're just skinning it is all we're doing. We're just going to come in there and clean the hole up. I'm actually having to cut the bottom because the center drill is a little bit longer than what was used. I'm going to put just a drop of oil there. And I'm going to put my tool, I'm going to push it over against the, uh, the chuck. Just very lightly, ever so slightly. I'm just going to let it sit there and dwell just for a second. And then we're going to back out. And letting it do that, it should have a nice true center cut with the steady rest right there. So upon inspection, I was able to improve it by one thousandths. So we're going to roll with it just like that and move on to our undercutting, get on with our spray welding. First thing I'm going to do is uh, clean it, make sure I get all that whey oil off of it and make sure that we have clean bearing journals. I don't want any oil on the shaft when I do in my spray welding. So just get any oily residue off of it. Our next step is going to be to mask the areas outside of the journal that I want to spray. So we're going to mask a little over here and we're going to mask this area right there. That's to keep the, uh, the metal powder spray as it's being uh, blown into this area. It keeps it from building up and sticking to this area of the shaft. All right, and so to do that, we're going to use this stuff right here. It's called Solution 103 Masking Compound. This is actually from Eutectic. This is their stuff right here. But if you do not have Solution 103, you can use, thing, you can use things like the actual soot from the acetylene torch, you know, without adding the oxygen, oxygen to the torch. Use the uh, soot and just soot up the shaft and then undercut it. Or you can use things like I, I've used the Dicom spray in the uh, spray can, you know, the, the bluing, you can spray it down with that and that works as well. All right, so it doesn't take a lot. So you're not like painting a, painting a wall with this stuff. You just need a little thin coat, just like that. Just turn the lathe on. I'm gonna make sure it doesn't get into that little area right there also. I'm just going right up next to where I know that I got to start my undercut. I'm going to go ahead and get this area here as well. And all this stuff will just polish off. This is actually too big of a brush. I need a one inch brush, but I couldn't find one. So we're just using this one here. The tip I always tell people, as soon as you're done using your brush, go wash this out in the sink. This is water soluble, it's not gonna hurt anything, so just go rinse it out. Because if you leave it like this, it's gonna dry just like paint and you'll have to throw it away. So I just like to reuse my brush as much as I can. Now that the masking has fully dried, we're going to go ahead and start our undercut. And I'm using a, a threading tool, just a standard threading tool there to do this undercut. We've got our machine set on 5,000 speed rate. And you can see where our bearing has done the, this is the wear pattern right there. So we're going to come just to the right side of where the wear padding starts and uh, undercut it starting there and clean it up to that point there. We're not going to go very deep with it. I'm just going to touch off. We'll take a couple of passes, clean it up. That's ten thousandths, and what I'll do is we'll make that pass there, and then we'll take one more cut at ten thousandths. I'm just being careful that that tool does not cut into that shoulder there. 
So what this is doing, this is giving room for the powder to actually build up and create what would be like a sleeve. You need to have a little area there for the material to build up on. All right, now that we have it undercut, I'm gonna go ahead and set the machine up to cut a thread pitch. And this is gonna be like a fine pitch. We'll just cut something somewhere around, say 24, 26, 28 threads per inch. And we're just gonna make one scratch pass going across there. Come back down to our start. All right, there's our touch off. I'm gonna go in 15 thousandths. I gotta set it 26 threads per inch. Just like that. Just one uh, scratch pass with a thread and that's to help the uh, material, the powder as it's being sprayed in there and, and bonding to the metal. It helps give it, an, uh, it helps hold it to it is what the book says. So that's part of the process is making a little thread scratch pass across there. So I modified my top notch insert and that was a bad insert anyway, it needed to be kind of swapped out so I just touched up that cutting side and then what I did is I modified it so that it would clear the shoulder and I can get in there and do the proper cutting and it would clear that corner right there and I'll show you why, you know my other, my ER16, um, you know this right hand cut tool, I don't have one for left hand cutting, it would not get in there to be able to cut this journal without hitting this journal right there. So this one sticks out there far enough where I can get in there and do the cutting, but I wouldn't be able to go back as far as I wanted to and clean that shoulder up like I want. So I just modified it. So that's what we did there. All right, let's go ahead and uh, start our, our cutting. Touch off right there. We'll, we'll take our 10 and see how it does. Worked pretty good. Got right where I wanted to. We're gonna come back and we're gonna do 10 more, just like before. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and reverse my feed back the other direction. I'm gonna go ahead and set the machine back up to our 26, is what I had, our 24, I'm sorry. I had it on six, 24 threads per inch. And I'm going to go in an additional 15 thousandths and make our scratch pass here. Just like that. All right, we're set up, we're ready to go. This is the torch right here that we'll use. This is the uh, Rototech gun that I have. This is old school, but it still works. I still have uh, plenty of powder that I use. This is the, uh, well, this is the bond coat that we'll use right there, the uh, Ultra Bond 3500. And then this is the top coat right there, the 19985. Still got some of that. This is a machinable final coat. This is what I always use for bearing journals, seal journals, things like that. I got my temp stick because you got to preheat it to 200 degrees. And then once you get it preheated, that's when you do your buildup coat. Uh, you got to be careful not to overheat it, though. You don't want to get it too hot whenever you're doing this process. So that said let's go ahead and get it fired up I'll try to get you some good video of this and we'll get it welded up all right guys here we go we're gonna start our preheat I'm backing off on that center just a little bit and I need my striker
get a little more hose over here. I'm just doing a little preheat right now. that we're at temp so I'm gonna put a bond coat on now turn it on the fume extractor That was our bond coat. I'm going to go with the build-up coat. got this side built up far enough right there I'm gonna reset up and uh, we're gonna move down to the chuck in and get that side built up
think that first time I, something was wrong. It wasn't coming out of there like it, it was supposed to. Yeah, I'm already there. I think my, uh, I think the nozzle, something was up. It wasn't coming out at the rate that it was supposed to. This side built up much faster, just like it was supposed to. That one was taking much longer. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the lathe back on and I'm gonna get a fan over here and get it blowing on this to try to get it to wrap it cool down. Our shaft is cool. It's completely cooled down. I've let it run for, I don't know, probably 20 minutes with the fan blowing on it. So we're gonna start turning it now. And what we're gonna use for our turning, I've got these two uh, new brazed on tool bits. These are Micro 100, 3 8 shank. And we're gonna go ahead and use these guys right here. Let's go ahead and take the uh, protective wax off of it. So, we've got some fresh tool bits right there that we will use. And I wanted to show this because Tool bits like this is it's great for doing these spray welding jobs because you can go over to your carbide grinder and regrind these things, and you're not blowing a uh, a good expensive carbide insert turning tool for doing uh, repair jobs like this. All right, we're gonna touch off on our highest peak there. It's usually right about in the middle, and just take a little at a time. I'm going to go in 20 thousandths. We're running a uh, 5 thousandths feed right here. And it's not going to like it. Make sure my center is tight. Looks like I'm going to have too much radius on that tool bit there. Not enough rigidity. I believe there's just too much radius ground, factory ground on the end of this tool right there. So I found the other one that, I, that I've been using for a while. This is also a Micro 100, one that I've already ground a couple times. I'm going to go over to the Baldor Carbide Grinder. I'm going to touch this up right there so that we've got a nice sharp corner. We'll break the corner, but we're, gonna, we're not going to have the radius there, and I think that'll help eliminate that chatter. What I'm doing is I'm eliminating that little radius that I had on there. The other thing to make sure you do is relieve the soft steel under and around the carbide so that you're not grinding that with your green wheel or your diamond wheel. So I just hit that over there on the belt sander to remove that soft steel. This is the diamond side here. I'm just going to touch that sharp corner on it. Just break it, just like that. All right, let's go give that a shot. It'd be doing better than it was. Got exactly 20 thousandths to come off of it.
We got a good size on our journal, just a little bit to polish off, but we've got the masking compound and a little bit of the dust on each side that we need to clean, plus we got the discoloration. So what I'm going to start with is my grinder with the wire wheel and just go ahead and give it a wire, wire brush first. Then I'll clean it up and give it a nice polish with some uh, smooth emery cloth. Okay, we're going to go ahead and finish out this side here now. Uh, that's the new uh, Micro 100 carbide tool right there. The radius was not as large as on the other tool there, so we're going to use that. Plus, we're real close to the, to the chuck in, so I don't think we're going to have any kind of chatter issues here. I don't think so. Just establishing a touch off there on the peak. So by the way, we're right there, I'm running 180 RPM. Doing much better by the chuck in. Only thing I don't like about left hand turning is that I can't get in here and uh, <laughs> measure the way I want to because the tool and everything is in the way. So I have to come around here to this side. It's okay. It's just a little bit inconvenient. But So we got about 50, 60 thousandths. I'm going to do another 20 thousandths rough and cut here. Just keep knocking it down. What I'll do is just stop right there. What I'm doing is getting rid of any of the dust or chips that are there so it doesn't mess up my measurement with the micrometer. Okay. Yeah, we still got 40, 40 thousandths to come off of it. Not much to come off there to bring it right where we where we want it to the 181 and a half. I've got a half a thousand. Usually once you get it flat, it takes a little more effort to get it down because there's all the little peaks are already rubbed off there. So just about there. Well, our shaft is finished. We've got both of our journals exactly where I wanted it, 1.181 and a half. So we got good fits there. Uh, only thing left that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this thing around 
and uh, get it indicated there. I want to finish polishing this other side just to kind of match this other side over here where we polish the threads and the journal there where the grinding wheel goes on because I can't get in there where it's chucked on. So I'm just going to do that off camera. But other than that, we're finished and uh, we'll bring you back for some final words. Well, there we go. There's our, there's our shaft all finished up. My part is done. Our journal's uh, spray welded and our shaft, everything's polished up good. Looks good and it's uh, ready to go back to Mark. So I will, I will make a recommendation. It wasn't part of um, my job here. He didn't mention anything about it. I did see a little bit of run out in this part of the shaft here. Now this is whoever manufactured it, whoever turned the shaft. Whenever they turned it, they left this area right here and not, it was not turned true with the rest of this. And I, I never machined my shafts like that. Uh, whenever I would machine any kind of shaft, a, a gearbox shaft, electric motor shaft like this, I would always make sure that every one of my journals are running true. And that's to help eliminate any out of balance in these, uh, in these shaft systems like this, you know, in this case, a rotor here. So, and that's what these guys are for right here. These are used for balancing. You take this to a, you know, a qualified electric motor shop and they put it on their balancing machine and they'll spin this thing and they'll put weights on this thing right here and they'll get this thing balanced. So, uh, Mark, I'd recommend maybe if you've got you a local electric motor shop to, uh, have them spin this thing on their balancer and to get it balanced. Cause I think that run out here is probably what caused this thing to have bad bearing journals there. I think you've got some vibration in this, in this motor right there, but you've got good, true journals here on both ends. Both these ends right here are running nice and straight right there. All right. So anyway, it was a pleasure getting this done for you. I hope everybody enjoyed the video watching the spray welding. Hopefully the video turned out good and you guys enjoyed. All right. We'll see you again next time.